Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks for, for joining us, especially today. That's the last day of the event, and there's almost nobody left. So thank you for, for being here. Um, I've been told that because the, um, the, um, this talk is being streamed online, uh, people can ask questions through slido.com. Just uh, if you have questions, you can just go to slido.com, uh, hashtag travel forward, and um, you will be able to um, input your questions there. And if we have some, min some time at the end of the talk, we'll, we'll go over them. So um, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a bold claim today. Uh, it's probably that, probable that some of you would not agree with my claim at the beginning of the talk. Hopefully, you all will after the talk. So uh, in order to introduce that claim, I would like to start by giving a, like a super quick masterclass of how B2B payments operate in the, in the travel space. I don't know how familiar you are, but just by way of super quick introduction, let me show you how this works. When we talk about B2B payments, we talk about payments that happen along the online distribution channel, which looks like something what, like what you have on the screen. You have travel companies in one end, at the other end, you have hoteliers. And um, those travel companies send their bookings to hoteliers together with a credit card through uh, some technology components called GDSs and, and channel managers, which send the booking to the hotel's central reservation system, the CRS. And from there, the booking and the credit card travels to the PMS. So that, that's very simple conceptually, but I would like to highlight that there's a technology component here that didn't exist a few years ago, which is the channel manager. Everybody's familiar with the GDSs, which um, um, became popular in the airline industry uh, because it was necessary to interconnect hundreds of um, uh, or thousands of travel companies with hundreds of airlines, and direct connectivity was complicated, so that's what gave rise to the GDSs. So um, with the advent of the internet and the need to interconnect thousands of travel companies with hundreds of thousands of hotels, the problem became much bigger uh, because um, it was very easy for uh, travel companies to send their bookings to any hotel in the world without having an actual contractual relationship, they could just send the booking by email, and they could simply attach a credit card through that book, to that booking, and that was it. It worked. The credit card was not just a form of payment, it was like a kind of contractual uh, dynamic agreement. It was, um, uh, it was a payment guarantee. It was like a dynamic contract, really. And that was very convenient when the volume of bookings was low at the beginning. But the situation right now is for different. Um, in fact, today the online distribution channel has become the largest distribution channel in, uh, in the hospitality space. And the number of bookings is, is very is large, it's huge. We're talking about millions of bookings on, on a daily basis. And handling those bookings by email became at some point very messy. And that's what gave rise to channel managers. Channel managers were to the hospitality industry with GDSs to the um, um, airline industry although with a higher degree of complexity because channel managers um, do more things than GDSs. So um, that worked very well uh, for distributing bookings from one end to another. The challenge was that um, payments, would well, because distributing payments with the bookings was so simple, um, you simply needed to attach a credit card, nobody really looked at the um, complexity of handling B2B payments. And as the volume of online bookings kept growing and growing and growing, we got to a situation where um, distributing payments just by attaching a credit card was not so efficient anymore. And the reason is because this picture that you have on the screen is quite simplified. The real picture looks some more like something like this. Um, you have, at the one end, you have the guest, the, the end customer, that books through a retailer, which could be an online travel agent, could be a, 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 a brick and mortar travel agent, it could be a travel management company, a TMC. And those guys, they have direct relationships with hotels, but they also source their inventory through other intermediaries and wholesalers like tour operators, sometimes destination management companies, sometimes bed banks. There's 
a significantly complex ecosystem of players, and it's over time it's kept getting more and more complex. And in fact, it's not unusual to see situations like the one you see here, where uh, an OTA can actually book a hotel through a bed bank, which in turn is booking through another bed bank, and sometimes you can have even three to four hops between the end customer and the hotel. And each of those hops is a B2B transaction. And the payment terms between different intermediaries differ from one to another. And margins are quite low. So making this efficient is, is really complicated. Um, so uh, if, if you, for instance, if, if you were um, a travel company, when you send a booking today, you just forget about how the booking will reach the hotel, because there's channel managers that take care of it. But when it comes to actually paying for that booking, attaching, simply attaching a, a, a virtual credit card does not take into consideration many things. For instance, you could, um, as, a, as a travel company, you would like, for instance, to generate a, 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 a different form of payment depending on the, um, on the hotel that you want, or, or on the partner that you want to trade with. If you are, if not, it's not the same if you're paying directly a hotel than if you're paying another uh, travel company like, like a bed bank or a tour operator, that that changes. So you would like to be able to choose different forms of payment. You would like to be able to choose between different payment service providers. Um, VCCs, virtual credit cards, are very convenient, but they have their own intricacies. Uh, you may work with a certain issuer that supports a number of currencies, but you want to pay a hotel somewhere else in the world, and maybe your issuer does not support the local currencies of that hotel. And that means that if you pay with euros and the hotel is charging the card in Mexican pesos, for instance, you're going to incur an FX fee. And on top of that, if the time of booking and the time of check-in are very distant from one another, you, there there's also uh, an exposure to currency fluctuations, which means that you may actually end up losing money in that transaction if you're not careful about, uh, about the FX. So taking into consideration, there's a lot of things to take into consideration when choosing a form of payment and a payment ser service provider. Um, the currencies. Uh, so currency support is one of them. The ability to uh, leverage uh, credit. Some partners will give you credit, some others will not. Then there's the possibility of obtaining rebates when you pay with a credit card. There's also the possibility that some hotels will not accept credit cards, and, uh, and you will need to then um, pay them with something else that cannot travel through the online distribution channel. That means there will you will need to do something manually to, in order to pay those hotels, maybe a bank transfer or something else. In those cases, typically, there will be an invoicing requirement, which means that you will need to receive an invoice and process it. Um, in other cases, it may be that you pay with a virtual credit card and um, you need an invoice in order to recover the VAT because you are working with a corporate customer. You need to invoice that corporate customer with VAT so you need also an invoice from the hotel with VAT. And if you pay the hotel with a credit card, maybe the hotel charges the card and forgets to send you the invoice, a VAT compliant invoice. And then you have to call the hotel in order to get that invoice. So it can get very messy. And streamlining all these complex and sophisticated um, uh, procedures that are involved in, in a B2B payment in, in this complex ecosystem uh, is far from optimal in the online distribution channel, where all you can do today is this, send a booking with a virtual credit card. So while we have seen that there's been an incredible evolution in how ch um, channel managers have evolved over time in the last 20 years, um, the only innovation that's happened uh, in the payment side of the equation is adding a V to the credit card, a virtual credit card, which was already a significant innovation, but it does not solve all the problems I was talking about before. Those problems need to be solved manually. And that's complex and costly and error-prone. And, uh, uh, and that means, at the end of the day, uh, that impacts your, your bottom line. So what is the solution? The solution would be, how could we evolve the channel managers to support sophisticated payment flows? Because today, you can't even um, specify information through the online distribution channel, um, describing how the payment should be 
execute it. You cannot even say, look, this booking will be paid with a virtual credit card, and I need an invoice, and uh, I want to maybe take out insurance for, uh, for, uh, to mitigate exposure to uh, currency fluctuations. You cannot do that through the online distribution channel. In fact, HTNG, which is the industry's um, standard organization, they tried to, um, to do a very small improvement, which was uh, adding a flag in the um, op Open Travel Alliance standard. That's the standard used for communicating bookings from one end to another. They tried to simply add a flag that specified that a certain credit card was not the guest credit card. It was a virtual credit card, because sometimes hotels did receive the booking with a credit card number, and they don't know if that's the guest credit card that's used as a guarantee, or it's the actual virtual credit card that the, um, that the OTA is sending that the hotel needs to charge at checkout. And because they don't know, they made mistakes. So they wanted to add a flag that simply identified a certain card as a virtual credit card. So nobody adopted <laughs> that flag, so it didn't work. So imagine trying to do everything I explained before that, that's necessary. Uh, it, it's really difficult. The problem really is that the people, the companies, that would need to implement any standard that improved B2B payments um, in this space GDSs and channel managers, that's not their business. They are not really interested in doing that. They are not doing it. Uh, there's been attempts to do it. They didn't work. So the end result is that the current distribution channel is a legacy constraint for payments innovation. It's, it's, as far as B2B payments is, are concerned, there's not much room for improvement if we keep ourselves stuck to an existing um, online distribution channel. And here's where I want to make my, my claim. The claim is that the, in the near future, the online distribution channel will evolve dramatically to look more like what you have on the screen now. Uh, it's um, it's going to be really an, like a new era in, on B2B payments. And the key component of that new era will be what we call the payment manager. And the payment manager, effectively, is the counterpart of the channel managers. The same way that they need to streamline the flow of bookings between the booking systems of travel companies and the booking systems of the hoteliers um, gave rise to um, the advent of the uh, channel managers because email was very inefficient. For the very same reason, today we've created uh, such a complex B2B ecosystem that we're absolutely convinced that the need for doing the same thing on the payment side of the equation, which is streamlining uh, payments from the payment systems, from travel companies to the payment systems of uh, hoteliers, is necessary. And this need is driving the rise of the payment manager, which, as I said before, is the counterpart of the channel manager. Payment managers are to payments literally the equivalent of channel, of, um, channel managers um, to bookings. So that's what I wanted to, uh, that was basically my main claim. And in fact, this claim is being, is being supported by the two major industry associations, Hetna and HTNG. Hetna was the main proponent of a concept of a new framework called the Open Payment Alliance, which in fact mirrors the Open Travel Alliance that facilitated the streamlining of bookings between booking systems. So the Open Payment Alliance, again, is the standard that facilitates that will facilitate the streamlining of payments from payment systems. And, uh, and this standard essentially describes how this payment manager will communicate with the different technology components of the distribution channel, how the payment manager will communicate with the booking engines, with the channel managers, with the GDSs, with the CRSs, and with the PMSs. That's essentially the role of that standard. And the great thing is that the standard is there. It was published last year, and uh, um, we've actually implemented it at Voxel. And uh, we tested that it works, because we're using it with, with real clients, and, uh, and we can, we've been able to, t uh, to check its benefits. So, so that's the payment manager, in a way, um, is responsible for obtaining uh, the booking information from the online distribution channel and then leveraging a payment partner's ecosystem where there's not only um, credit card issuers, which of course there are, because credit cards and virtual credit cards will continue to be probably the most prevalent form of payment in this space, but there will be other forms of payment as well. 
not just credit cards. And uh, there will be um, other players here that will play significant roles, companies such as Ingenico or ADN that uh, can play a role in straight-through processing, for instance, um, automating the way credit cards are, are settled. Uh, there will be currency management companies like our friends of Cantox that I think they have a call later on today um, that will help companies mitigate those, um, uh, the currency exposure that I mentioned before that typically arises when you need to pay a hotel in a different currency than your funding currency. So, so that's, that's the idea. That's where we are convinced we're heading. Um, the, we have one of the components there, which is the standard that specifies how to communicate with the uh, payment manager. What the standard does not explain is how to build a payment manager. It says, it, it basically, the Open Payment Alliance says, look, uh, the, uh, the payment manager should do all this. This is how it needs to communicate. But how the payment manager is implemented, that's something that has been left to the players, to the different industry players. Um, right now, this is totally new. There's not a lot of uh, payment managers out there, like there's a lot of channel managers. We predict that there will be many more payment managers in, in years to come, and there will be significant competition in, in this space. But um, uh, with Voxel, uh, we've been the, the first company to implement a full-fledged payment manager, and our interpretation of the standard is that the payment manager should look like something like this. Essentially, we conceive the payment manager as something that has four core functionalities. One of them is quite evident, is the connectivity with all the different um, technology components of the online distribution channel. The payment manager has to be able to download bookings from online booking tools, online booking engines, GDSs, channel managers, all the different components technology components of the online distribution channel. That, that's fundamental. The payment man in order to process payments, the payment manager has to receive the bookings that it needs to pay. So that's the first thing. The second thing is how do we decide, how does the payment manager decide what to do, how to pay a certain booking? Once you have the payment, de uh, sorry, the booking details, and uh, now, now the next step is, okay, now I need to pay for that booking, and that what needs to happen will depend on multiple factors. So the second component of the payment manager is what we call the rules engine. Basically, the rules engine processes the bookings that it's downloaded from the online distribution channel, and then it determines what's the optimal form of payment for any given booking, which could be a VCC or it could be something else. It depends on uh, the agreements between travel companies and hoteliers and it decides what's the optimal payment service provider, right? It could be, I want to pay with a VCC, but then I have 20 different payment service providers available. Some of them provide credit, some don't, some support certain currencies, some support other currencies, some operate in cer certain markets, some operate in, in other markets, some give me a very nice rebate, some don't give me such a nice rebate. And the uh, rules engine basically combines all that information based on, of course, every customer's preferences, so every, the, 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 the rules engine needs to be pre-configured. Uh, it's a, it's a customer-specific pre-configuration. And based on that, the rules engine determines how to orchestrate a payment, um, what form of payment is going to be used, what payment service provider, if there's an invoicing requirement, if there's a micro-hedging requirement for that booking. All that is decided by the, booking, by the rules engine and sent to the payment manager as a payment instruction. So the payment manager receives that payment instruction with the list of things that need to be done. And the first of them is actually generating a form of payment. And that's the third component of the uh, payment manager, which is the virtual payments hub. So this virtual payments hub is what connects the payment manager to all the payment service provider ecosystem that we saw in the previous slide. Okay? The idea is the payment, that's the payment, that the payment manager is connected to virtually anybody, any conceivable form of payment payment service provider. And of course, that takes time. We're currently building uh, that, uh, that connectivity. We have uh, quite a few uh, players connected, but uh, that doesn't happen overnight, as, as you can imagine. And then the fourth layer is what we call the value added services layer. And here, essentially, we have different functionalities, such as currency management, um, Omni-channel payment distribution, of course, if you want to send a VCC to a hotel, that's quite simple, but if you want to pay the hotel with another form of payment that's not a VCC, that cannot travel through the online distribution channel, so we need a way to uh, send that payment to the, to the hotel. 
Um, we have electronic invoicing and billback capabilities here as well. That means uh, maybe sometimes I need to receive an invoice before payment can be settled. Sometimes payment will be settled right at check-in, and I will need to collect an invoice afterwards. That's billback. So that's also another cap capability of the payment manager. The ability to reconcile an invoice and settle the payment after uh, reconciliation. Of course, reporting is very important because if you want this whole process to be entirely seamless, entirely touchless, uh, and no manual intervention at any point, um, the last step in the process, which is reconciling your bank account, should also be fully automated. And that's where reporting um, comes in. So that's essentially the, uh, our vision of, uh, of a payment manager. And that's, uh, in full disclosure, that's how we've implemented our payment manager. Um, we call this, uh, this infrastructure, we call it Babel Pay. That's uh, um, a company that we actually set up recently to, uh, to run this business division this business unit. And um, uh, as I said before, I'm, I'm convinced that this will, um, in the near future, uh, there will be many other companies that will start doing similar things because our experience with uh, our partners is that this provides significant competitive advantage. And when competitive advantage kicks in, everybody wants to follow suit, right? So I, I don't think that as companies start adopting this technology and start gaining a competitive edge, other companies will not want the same thing. And by the way, yeah, if you are curious about who is already in our network, we, it's not, this is not just a happy idea we had and we have a few uh, clients on board. We have a very, a very significant ecosystem of players. Um, in the, basically, we have like four different groups of partners. Starting with the technology players, we have uh, companies in all the spectrum across the online distribution channel from PMS systems, uh, um, uh, CRSs, we have connectivity. In fact, we have connectivity to the entire uh, or the three major GDS systems in the world. We have connectivity with bo online booking tools like TripSource, connectivity with switches, channel managers, uh, hundreds of PMS systems. So we have literally over 100 different uh, connectivities here already in place. We also have dozens of uh, players in the, um, in the B2B payments space. Um, here you have a bunch of them, uh, by no means all of them. But as I said before, we have all types of companies here, not just credit card issuers, but also alternative forms of payment like, like Shander Pay, um, uh, payment gateways like, like Ingenic or uh, currency management uh, companies like, like Cantox. And then we have, of course, the actual industry players. Uh, without them, <laughs> this wouldn't make any sense, right? So, we also have a lot of um, travel companies already connected to us, literally hundreds of them, and literally as well thousands of hotels that are already connected to us. So not all of them are leveraging all the capabilities that I mentioned before. Some of them do, but some just take advantage of certain capabilities and not others. So the idea is, since we already have the connectivity with all of them, Little by little, our plan is to start incorporating and enhancing our value prop to um, all our existing partners so that they start adopting massively the, um, uh, the technology and take advantage of everything I said before. So um, just to close the presentation, um, I usually, when, I, when uh, in the recent past, when we were making these presentations, we, we used to talk about the different use cases that we were able to implement. The situation now is such that any conceivable use case that you can come up with is, can be supported by our technology. Uh, the payment manager supports any complex B2B payment flow that you can think of. Absolutely everything, at least everything that we've come up with. So um, what I wanted to talk more than use cases is about opportunities for innovation. Um, Hedna and HTNG, the, uh, the, entity, the, the industry players, the, in, the industry associations that design the uh, Open Payment Alliance standard now are working in the next steps of this standard, which will involve the convergence of uh, B2B payments, as I presented before, with other forms of B2B payments, such as commission payments and customer-centric payments. So, any form of any conceivable form of B2B payments. I've been talking only OTAs paying hotels, but also hotels paying OTAs. 
will fall under, under the same framework, potentially. So the idea is to have a universal framework for handling any, form, any conceivable form of B2B payment. Then um, there's a lot of room for improvement with VCCs. VCCs are a great technology, and uh, the, um, the payment manager can help significantly streamline how VCCs are settled. And one, of way of doing, one way of doing that is via straight-through processing. Literally, with a straight-through processing, implementing a straight-through processing in the payment manager means that VCCs no longer need to be sent to a hotel. A VCC is generated by the payment manager on behalf of an OTA, and when the time of settlement comes, maybe after receiving an invoice, the VCC can be settled automatically at the payment manager and the money disbursed to the hotel's bank account without anybody even seeing that VCC, which takes everyone out of PCI scope. It's another great advantage. And then, uh, obviously, one of the big things here is the possibility to leverage alternative forms of payment. So we're talking about bank transfer guarantees, instant payments, potentially cryptocurrencies, any th anything you can think of can be incorporated here. And last but not least, um, one of the possibilities that we're exploring is the ability to create your own payment program. Now, a travel company or even a hotel company, they can decide, okay, look, I'm going to create a specific payment program that leverages maybe different forms of payment, <clears throat> and each one of them has different conditions attached. So uh, travel companies will be able to negotiate with hotels how they want to pay or get paid, right? If I pay you with a VCC, these will be the conditions. If I pay you with a bank transfer guarantee, these will be the conditions, the payment terms, and maybe the discount or whatever I'm going to get. So that adds an incredible degree of flexibility to the industry uh, that didn't exist before. So, um, uh, and I could talk, I could talk much more about all the different opportunities for innovation that, that are coming up, people are coming to us constantly with ideas. Uh, definitely, we have more ideas than bandwidth to make them happen, but, uh, but that's a great thing. Before, there were no ideas because there was nothing to do about, the, uh, uh, about improving the current situation. It was not possible because we were limited by a legacy constraint imposed by the dis online distribution channel. Now that legacy constraint is gone and we have freedom to do anything we want. We have freedom of choice now. So I, I guess with that, I'll, I'll end my presentation, and there's a few minutes left. If there's any question, we can go over them. Actually, let me check if there's any question here. Um, so there's no, no questions online. Is there any question in the audience that we can address? No? OK. So uh, there's only two minutes left anyway, so I, th I guess we can leave it here. Thank you very much.